Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Susan Griffin. I'm the principal of Griffin and Skaggs Collaborative. We're a marketing and communications firm specializing in B2B um, marketing. And it's my distinct honor and privilege to welcome our uh, commentary participants in this forum today. Um, I, I urge you to read the commentary uh, of Susie, the company. Um, Katie Gross is with us today. She's the chief client officer for Susie. And she's also with Abby Finnis, who's the head of portfolio insights and analytics at PepsiCo. And they're going to be having a conversation about an extremely relevant topic this week. Um, and that is the future is female. So take it away, Katie and Abby. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us for the fireside chat. We're hoping this discussion is going to be one of the most informative and action-oriented conversations that you'll attend. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Katie Gross, Chief Customer Officer of Suzy, the real-time market research platform. Hundreds of the world's top brands to help them identify more agile ways to tap consumers for both quantitative and qualitative insights that help drive decisions uh, for businesses and growth. So we're conducting this chat today to discuss how leading companies are championing women in leadership in market research. And it happens to be the same day that we have a vice president that is female that is joining the White House today. So a great day to have this discussion indeed. Um, I'd love to kind of start with, with Abby. Um, uh, if you could introduce yourself to, to everybody and also get us started with how you got your start in market research. Sure. Love to. Thanks for thanks for having me. Looking forward to the chat. Abby Finnis, um, I lead the portfolio insights and analytics team for the U.S. beverage business at PepsiCo. Um, it's a role I've had for a little over two years, was a new role when I stepped in, but I, I feel like I get to have all the fun. Um, my team accepts uh, builds and then embeds um, solutions to come up um, come up with faster, more agile decision making on both a short term, so in year performance and and plan decisions, as well as a long term. So we build foresights tools um, and own the consumer centricity agenda um, at PepsiCo as well, which operates on both of those planes. So a really a really fun role. Um, I've been at PepsiCo for a little over 10 years and have had a, a variety of roles um, over that time. Been on the manufacturer side of insights in global and US roles, again, for some time longer than I, I think I'd like to admit. Um, but I got my start um, at, in insights actually by you know going through marketing and sales interview processes through my university and feeling that none of it was quite right. Um, I had majored in marketing, minored in economics, which really just speaks to my love for both art and science or art and numbers and understanding markets um, and just the reality of, of how to influence decisions in this, this world of, of commerce. Um, so when I stumbled on a job profile for an entry-level role at a company called Basie's, um, it was part of Nielsen at the time that worked in the innovation space. I just fell in love with it. There was a forecasting component to it, as well as sort of a diagnostic and consulting element of helping big CPG companies place the right innovation bets and optimize innovation that they were taking to market and plan for, uh, you know, the amount of incremental volume that it would bring to their business. So a role I really fell in love with and by reading it on monster.com, which Katie found <laughs> quite, quite funny. I'm not sure I've met many people that found their role um, on that site, particularly mm -hmm. then, but um, it was a great, it was a great first step um, into a career that I've, I've loved ever since. It's wonderful to hear. Um, I think pe many people think they stumble into to market research, but it's great to kind of hear that it was a passion of yours from the very start. Similar to, to myself, I studied psychology um, with a minor in criminal justice and really my only marketable skill uh, at the end of university was SPSS. So I inevitably ended up, um, and unlike you, I actually, I started um, on the manufacturer side. So I worked for a private label um, company in the UK serving um, Italian products to the UK grocery stores before I then went vendor side. So I started the opposite way around. <laughs> um, I'd love to get a little more kind of perspective on um, on you know how you kind of transition. So you started at Basies and then you've moved into the manufacturing side. Kind of what were the differences there in your career? 
Yeah. I So I alluded to, I mean, Basie's, if anyone's familiar with it, um, was a really powerful start in that it it gave me a strong foundation in, again, forecasting, manipulating, understanding sales and panel data sources, modeling um, through Basie's proprietary model. And then again, the software and the survey side, right? So there was also an element of evaluating and helping improve ideas. And I got to take all that powerful information and consult my clients. And I, I became so close and embedded with some of them. I was often in their offices and getting to know them and see the breadth of decisions that insights roles on the manufacturer side were, were able to influence. And I again, fell in love with that idea. So I, I became quite committed after about, I want to say it was about five years I spent at Basie's, um, a number of you know roles as I, I moved up and was eventually leading um, a team and decided the time was right to, to try and pursue a switch onto the manufacturer side. So I stepped into a role actually, so today I work at Pepsi, Back then, uh, quite some time ago, uh, it was a role of Coca-Cola. Um, so entered in beverages and here I am back, um, funny world. But uh, I stepped into a role that had been open for some time, which was great um, because it was just you know, a fire hose of need. So I very quickly expanded my experience from innovation and concept and product work to you know, developing advertising campaigns, influencing portfolio strategy, sitting at the table with a number of functions to talk about in your performance and and how to improve against plans. So a really quick, um, I would say, um, broadening of, of my skill set. Um, but I had a lot of the transferable skills. And I know we'll get to hopefully later, you know, what it's what I think about in building a team today and trusting um, proven transferable functional skills, I think is going to be a really important part of building teams for the future and insights because it's changing so quickly. So I was lucky that someone took the leap on me and I, I made the quick switch and it's been fun ever since. I've been on the manufacturer side, um, again, in global and US roles ever since at a variety of great companies. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And you and you, you traveled in your career as well. Is that right? Could you share some of the stories uh, about travel? Yeah, I mean, that's I think that's part of the fun of insights, right? I mean, and gosh, it'll be great when we can all get back to the world where we get to go embed in markets, spend time with people, um, whether it's, you know, one on one, you know, immersing with a group of folks or it's, you know, through that one way mirror um, in a focus group room. I think we all we all love getting to experience different cultures, different realities. And that's that's part of what drew us, I believe, to this this career choice. I also think it's been really interesting in global roles to get to know different, you know, business teams and different realities and how to influence decisions, you know, across regions of a global company. That's been a really, really interesting part of um, my global roles as well. And I know you love to travel too, Katie. That's something you've talked yeah. about. Yeah, absolutely. I um west of England and uh, moved to the big wide world of, of London, but I loved going to focus groups in in the UK, different parts of Leeds and Bristol. Um, and it really was, you know, the com combination of qual and quant um, I loved in that I had a product at the time that was really struggling in, in marketplace, did a lot of surveys, couldn't find out why. It was only when we went to a focus group, we had created this beautiful product with a, a ridged pot that was creme caramel. It was designed to be turned over onto a plate, take the pot off, and it's got this great uh, kind of look to it. But when we were in the focus group, the participants really said, I don't think this product's very good value for money. I can't get my spoon into all those ridges. And it really found that in a in a survey at all. And that's why I've always loved the combination of, of quant and quant. Do you have any stories that you can share where you kind of like taken a leap or had some certain insights that you can share with everybody? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I have so many stories it would take up the rest of our time. But I think, you know, one top of mind, um, and I was going to say this to, to your comment, because I, I think we're all really drawing on intuition at this point that we've built about people and, and being able to apply that um, in a pretty purely virtual insights world right now has been mm -hmm. has been interesting. But I think intuition and building that kind of informed gut um, and being able to use that and help connect pieces of information or signals, we often call them on my team, that we get through our survey work or through all of our data mining, I think is a really important part of 
in part of the role and more so even as we go into the future. And I think, you know, my story is is just a case where I drew on that, right? It's an example of where just to prove that survey work alone or data mining alone is not going to necessarily get you to the right choice, right? It's being an being a professional that's built that informed gut, knows the market knows what people want and can read between the lines of what they're able to vocalize. That um, really helped me um, back when PepsiCo was launching Kickstart for Mountain Dew. It was actually Mm -hmm. the most successful launch at the time um, in about a decade. Um, And if we had just looked at the survey data, honestly, it it was questionable whether or not we, it was clear to proceed given the risk profile. But the team and myself got behind the conviction we were able to get um, on the business case for the portfolio on what we knew consumers needed and wanted from that trademark. Um, and we're able to convince and get the organization behind us to, to take that chance. And, you know, it, it absolutely paid off. Again, it was the most successful launch in a decade, over a hundred million in sales um, and really really helped push that trademark to a new target audience. So just a case where an example of where, you know, having that insights professional intuition that you curate and build over time through immersive work, through empathy, through big data, um, you know, pays off. And for me, that's the fun of the fun of the job. Um, So. Yeah, absolutely. So focusing on Let's move on to come gender topics um, and championing female leadership. Um, I think I mean, well, my personal perception is that market research has always been fairly well represented um, with females. And, you know, as we know, the, the world is becoming much more technologically driven. And uh, there's definitely an acute shift away from those traditional um, research methodologies into tech platforms um, and big data, uh, as you mentioned. So I've definitely seen a lot more males um, coming into the industry. I think there's also that kind of like old... Um, adage of uh, females are more found in qual company companies and males are more found in qual um i personally have spent a lot of my career in the panel industry which is very very con focused um where it was a lot of males and on syndicated market research in my time at mintown stylus it was very female driven would love to kind of know your experience and how you think that has shifted to today yeah i mean be a gender or you know any other background of experience or demographic, I think diversity is key to a powerful insights team. I mean, to the extent we're trying to represent a diverse population of of consumers, you know, to have that empathy and and to bring those perspectives, you need a diverse team. Um, You know, and specifically on your point about data, I do think, you know, we're seeing data fluency and just whether it's analytics or thick data coming together and really representing, I think, the future of the function. And it's been exciting to watch that bring more more males into the picture um, and and help help teams expand. So I think fostering a culture, which which PepsiCo does nicely of, you know, helping, you know, broaden experiences and support each other as we stretch into new spaces has been something really, really exciting to watch. But I I do think, you know, different genders, again, different backgrounds, you do bring, you know, an organic difference in your way into things and a different way to empathize, a different way to, you know, solve problems. And that's, again, I think part of the exciting power of the future brings us closer to the populations, as I said, that we represent. So. It's been, yeah. it's been fun to experience, to your point. Yeah, for sure. I know that at Pepsi, um, you typically rotate team members so that you have some more transferable skills. Is that right? Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, and I would say it's something we've been talking more and more about over the last, call it 18 months, just because of how dynamic and how data fluent um, you know, future insights leaders are gonna need to be. We feel that it's really important to be quite deliberate in making sure as you know, team members rise up through different roles that we are broadening their skill set. Um, because that, mm-hmm. you know, different roles present different business challenges, different data sets, and we're we're working quite hard to move folks around so we can encourage transferring skills and experiencing, um, connecting to new types of data, because we just believe that really is the future of insights. Yeah, that's really great. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about, they used to kind of be the, the qualitative market search camp and the quantitative camp. And I think that, you know, is slowly coming back together. 
which might um, therefore mean that we're kind of seeing that, that those gender roles uh, blur a little bit too. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Is Qual and Quant really finally coming to <laughs> together? I think so. I mean, I'm all for, I mean, there there shouldn't be these lines or sort of faux divisions. I mean, you see it even at mm -hmm. Susie, right? I mean, I know this isn't about Susie, but mm -hmm. uh, you've successfully stretched into both. I think at the end of the day, at least in my mind, we're, we're a team trying to influence good business deci decisions and advocate for our consumers, regardless of, of how we've unearthed to those insights or connected them. And, and the more data fluent you are and the more you can connect and find those, those really powerful unlocks, the better set up for the future, in my opinion. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so we've both worked both supplier side and brand side. I'd love to kind of hear from you how you feel lead uh, female leadership in particular is different vendor side versus kind of the brand and manufacturer side, if there is indeed a difference that you've seen. I mean, I, this is a tough one because um, I was obviously at different moments in my career um, when as I've made the switch. I mean, I, I think female leadership styles lend very nicely to, you know, supplier side roles and it, just in how women influence, in how women want to lend a hand in solving a problem and be a consultant. Um, and it's been exciting for me to watch different leadership styles grow. I've been at Pepsi for over a decade now, and I've seen, you know, certainly a lot of leaders with that, I would almost call it more of a, a service orientation for sure, um, but also, you know, different different powerful voices in the room with a, with a very different approach succeed. So I, I hope to see more of that in the future and just, um, you know, different female leadership styles, um, you know, demonstrating success at, at both sides of things. Yeah, that's really interesting that you say that, um, that the the vendor side, um, you know, probably does lend itself uh, well to, to females rising into leadership positions because we do indeed love to serve and we love to problem solve and we love to people please. Um, and you're right, when I think about the market research industry, I probably see more female leaders at the, at the top in market research agencies than maybe I do at some of those, uh, some of the bigger, very well established brands. Um, which could be um, a challenge indeed. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've seen over the over your time um, when it comes to to women progressing into leadership roles, particularly in market research? I mean, I think I would like to think we all share the sentiment that we're not doing our job if we're not influencing a decision. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes that requires, you know, an outsized amount of confidence. Um, and charisma to to influence all the seats at a table in a room and i think being comfortable with having as strong a voice as anybody else at the table and advocating for what we know whether it be in hard data with our you know with our gut as i talked about earlier what we know to be the right decision for our consumers and therefore sustainably for our business I mean, again, that just that takes courage, that takes, um, you know, confidence and it takes compelling storytelling, which I do think women are, are great storytellers um, mm -hmm. and just channeling that and, and making sure we nurture the confidence and the, you know, the ability to voice your opinion fearlessly, as we say at PepsiCo, I think is a really important element of supporting women as they come up, um, come up through the ranks into leadership. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think you mentioned earlier um, kind of empathy as uh, combining the arts? Do you think that that kind of empathetic nature of, of females has really kind of helped in market research for us to be better leaders? I think so. I mean, I, I, I'm big on empathy for consumers and applying mm -hmm. that to business deci decisions and equally empathy for each other. Um, and I think women naturally benefit in both, we are able to demonstrate it and use empathy building and understanding what can influence other stakeholders in the room. At the same time, we're also great at channeling, um, you know, empathy to how to better resonate and better delight our consumers. So I think women, and not to say other demographics, no, but I think women certainly benefit from from you know an organic, um, empathetic spirit. Yeah. And thinking about big data analytics, 
um, you know, AI moving into market research and so on. Those are kind of traditionally STEM topics that you know, are typically kind of more male driven. Um, what kind of skills do you think um, we as females need to start like really focusing on and developing to make sure that we are, uh, you know, seen as those leaders in those traditionally kind of male focused um, areas of, of analytics and diagnostics? I mean, I think curiosity and just confidence in your transferable skills and, and realizing you may be d more data fluent than you thought. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. I've um, been fortunate in that my first step, uh, you know, threw me into all different types of data and modeling. And it's okay, though, if, if that's not where you began. If you're naturally curious and you understand how to connect data, I would say, be, be confident and know that you can nurture the rest of it in yourself. And I would say expect of your company to help you get those experiences if you believe that's important to future insights leadership. And again, that goes back to at least, uh, you know, at PepsiCo being very deliberate in rotating. Um, so if someone wants an insights leadership role down the road, we know what that's going to take. So let's come together and make sure we're leaning on their transferable skills, trusting them and getting those those fresh experiences quickly. Yeah, that's really important. And I think also the tools of today, Power BI, Tableau are making it so much easier to work with the numbers that it's really about asking the right questions, not about how skilled you are getting the numbers out of the data in the first place. It's really, you know, what do we need to see from this data? Um, and, and as you mentioned, storytelling as an aspect of that. Um, well, how can, uh, a question from uh, Abel on our team, so how can men be better allies to help females progress into leadership roles? And this, I guess, applies to more than just market research. I mean, I, I think I benefit from working with a lot of great, great men at PepsiCo. Um, and I think, you know, day to day, being a fluid team that's willing to step in and help each other solve problems and, explore data or methodologies that perhaps a partner hasn't done before. I think that's a really, um, really important thing that we try to do every day um, at PepsiCo. Um, and just, you know, I think feedback and respecting different styles um, and flexing communication are always, you know, certainly really important, again, regardless of, of you know, the demographic we're talking about. Um, hopefully yeah. that helps. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've had some fantastic male um, leaders, but I, uh, you know, we're, we're of a similarish generation. There's definitely been some males in, in our time that have certainly said, you know, she's she's just got married, she's probably going to have a baby, and uh, she's may not come back from maternity leave, et cetera. And I think those are old fashioned uh, concepts, and, you know, I think men can be better allies by really driving forward and, and making sure that, that females and mothers in the workplace have a career trajectory um, ahead of them and so on. Yeah. Um, one, one thing at PepsiCo, I will say, sorry to interrupt you on that one, is, you know, calling, ha having expectations of other men, because sometimes I think it's more comfortable for, you know, for a female to have a male colleague, um, you know, sort of draw the line on what is and isn't acceptable. And that's been a great behavior we've seen. And also, um, you know, leadership being supportive of more flexible working styles again male female um i think helps particularly keep you know moms in in the workforce longer um and that's a really important thing again if because you know moms are a lot of the consumers we're trying to represent it would be it's powerful to have them on our team so yeah absolutely so one last question um for you uh what advice do you have for females who want to be future leaders in market research Make sure you love it. Make sure you love people. Um, make sure you're nurturing your storytelling because um, at the end of the day, you've got to influence and compel people. Um, but if you're having fun with it and you just truly enjoy advocating for consumers and, and making sure they're heard on the business side, I think the sky's the limit. Um, I would say, you know, follow your curiosity and trust that you can transfer experiences from one data set or one business question to another and um, go explore. I, I think, you know, I, I imagine we're going to see more and more female leaders um, across manufacturers, supplier in the insights profession. I'm excited to, to watch it happen. Yeah. 
and we have one going into the White House in uh, just today. So <laughs> it's also exciting to, to see that at the top. Um, fantastic. Thank you so much, Abby. I always love chatting with you. Um, and at this point, I will hand back to Susan. Thank you, Katie. Oh, thank you so much, Katie and Abby. This was terrific. And we, we have a lot more comments and questions in the portal, but I'm sure that um, you, you can reach out to those folks um, after the session. And please, everybody watching, thank you so much for uh, attending the forum. Make sure you read the, it, the commentary that Susie has published in the report around the importance of agile research. And um, thanks for your time today, ladies.